Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Have you guys ever wondered what all those numbers mean? Like the numbers on the racket, the numbers online that talks about specs of the racket? Well, I'm going to explain in more detail what each of those numbers mean. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so my buddy Dax here uh, sent me an email um, asking me this particular question. He says, can you explain what the various racket specifications mean? Some of them are obvious, you know, the length of the racket, the head size. But I've always wondered what four points head light means. What is swing weight? How is it different from strong weight? What unit of measurement is used for stiffness? I know less than 70 RA is generally stiff and less than 60 RA is generally flexible. But what does that number actually mean? Thanks much, Dax. Thank you for that uh, question. Um, I definitely can go into detail about all of that. So, um, before I get started though, uh, if you want to check out my merch or want to support the channel, the website is tennisspinusa.com. All right, guys. So I know that you know, a lot of these specifications, a lot of the specifications online and on the individual websites always say, Four points headlight, one points headlight, even balance, one points head heavy. But what does all that mean though? Let me show you this one. This one says 10 points headlight. So this actually is unstrung. Okay. This is unstrung headlight. As you can see by the uh, kind of a scale here that it's head light. This is the head, therefore it's bottom handle heavier, okay? So this racket is 10 points head light, okay? 10 points head light. This racket is 27 inches, okay? 27. Okay, we're going to look for the midpoint of this racket, which is what, guys? 13.5, which is right about where that throat edge is. Now, it's saying that this is 10 points head light. Each point is equal to one eighth. One eighth. Okay? So I'm going to try to do this with one finger here. So we're going to have one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So balance point of this racket unstrung is 12 inches. So we move from 13 and a half to 12 inches, an inch and a half difference in the balance here. So this is pretty head light here. 10 points is a lot. So that's pretty crazy actually, but the fed racket's also like 12 points headlight, right? Cause you got a heavy racket overall, but you have all the weight kind of down in here. So you get a faster head, but we're going to get to that in a minute. Um, so going back to Dax question here, four points headlight. Okay. Four points headlight. 12 and a half, 13 and a half is right about there. Okay. So we're four points, one, two, three, four. So at 13 inches is four points head light. So it's basically two of these lines equal one eighth of an inch, okay? So that's how I got from 13 and a half to 13, okay? Four points head light, 13 inch mark, 13 inch mark, okay? Hopefully I explain that each point each point is equal to one eighth 
of an inch one way or another. So head light meaning it you count towards the head. Head heavy means that you count towards the handle. Okay? So you can measure it in inches. You can measure in centimeters. You can even measure it in millimeters by just moving that dot over one more. Okay? Now, swing weight. Swing weight. You guys see me using that swing weight machine, you know, and does this thing, does this thing, and it calculates a number, right? What kind of number is it calculating and what does it do for us? Well, when I put it on the, uh, the machine, right? The greater the number, the more mass comes through. But what does it give you? It gives you more stability, more power. The heavier, the more swing weight, the more power it's going to give you. The lower the number, the lower the number, the more head speed it's going to give you. So what people are usually looking for that's in let's say high school, college, um, you know, intermediate advance is somewhere between like a 300 to a three, maybe 20, 25, 330 would be like the max you would probably want because you want somewhere in between maneuverable and too heavy. So, and that 300 to 330 seems to be the sweet spot. Um, over 330, it's a lot to get through. You know, it's kind of like bringing us back to the hammer days back in the day, which those numbers are like 350 or more. Um, 300, below 300, you're going to get a lot of speed. But, you know, when you contact that ball, it's going to be kind of unwieldy and could possibly cause a little tennis elbow. Okay, so we want to be right, right around that 300 to 330 range on that swing speed. Okay, so and that that thing measures it out. I mean, we there too bad there isn't such a thing as what you can make on your own or test on your own without a machine. Because um, I know a bunch of you have asked me, how can I calculate swing weight without a machine? Well, I'm sure there there's a way, but, you know, I'm not a genius scientist. I'm just a C student, guys. So um, I'm sure we can ask somebody. Okay. Now, the one question that gets talked about all the time is stiffness, RA. Okay. RA actually just means racket analysis, uh, racket analysis. It, it's a rating. So it basically talks about how stiff the racket is. I used to have a machine way back when that actually tested that. Um, it broke a long time ago and I didn't want to spend my life savings on another one. It was made by Babolat and it was an RDC machine that tested stiffness and swing weight and everything else. But um, it eventually broke a um, long time ago. But... All it really did though, guys, all it really did though was I clamped it in just like that swing weight machine down and there was a little piece here that I, I hooked on to here and then I pressed the button and all the thing would do is basically just kind of force it down like that and then a number would pop up, you know, anywhere between from what I remember 65 to um, 78 or nine is what I usually saw. So, I mean, it's a basic, basic, all it's doing is measuring flex is what it's doing. So it, it's certain things will actually throw it off. Like it won't understand certain rackets because all it's doing is just measuring, you know, pushing it down and forcing it down. Um, I'm gonna actually have you come over here to the rackets with me. Um, like this racket here, because of the way this is made, 
in the with these pads here connecting the racket together it would push it down but this part would literally just give give too much right therefore you got a rating of like 25 or 30. it was super low because it wasn't a complete racket that was you know basically one piece so if you want a super flexible racket this is supposedly super low and probably the lowest on the market this and the other um triad the triad three okay but i mean if you guys ever hit these rackets they're actually pretty stiff but it's because of how it's made here and here in the shoulders that makes it so low let's head back to the board here so low flex low flex right would be in the 40 to the 60s okay so that's kind of like the ultimate flexible racket with the most control and the least power okay the middle range here is probably what most rackets are made um, into 61 to 70 is the average and that's called medium medium power medium control okay so it's medium flex let's say anything over 71 is considered pretty stiff and pretty high on the power scale okay so it's considered stiff okay so i mean usually usually we can kind of see by the beam of the racket how stiff a racket could be the thinner this is the more flexible it is the thicker this is the stiffer it is right because you have more mass here there's going to be less torquing in the racket the thinner it is the more torquing will happen okay does that make sense the thinner this is the more bend it'll go the thicker it is the stiffer it'll be okay so i know a lot of people actually like go like this to you know like a pro staff and say that's stiff that's stiff you know i talked about that before right i'm like okay like i i stopped arguing about that it's like sure it's stiff compared to a wooden racket okay anyways but that's basically how the numbers work now there's always a give and a take as i've kind of explained to you the higher the swing weight right the more power you're probably going to get the less control okay the stiffer the racket the more power you're going to get the less control the more control you have in a racket right the lower this number is going to be the more flex the racket will have okay so and when we talk about the numbers on here we're talking about unstrung specs okay so um the balance and the swing weight changes when it's strung when you put an overgrip on here it may change a little bit but not much except for the balance actually the balance will alter a bit so if you do anything to the racket it will alter numbers you put a dampener in here um yeah it, it changes things okay you put lead up here obviously it's going to change things so the only thing it doesn't change the only thing it doesn't change is the natural stiffness of the racket okay so the ra should not change because by adding anything on here is going to keep the flex the same because that's just a natural state of the racket all right okay dax i hope that answered your question guys thank you for watching tennis spin where we put our spin on your tennis